serve people. Yeah. <laughs> it's a pleasure. It's a pleasure. I was praying out loud at the at the jail, and I said, "Lord, these ladies need somewhere to go with love and affection, and you need to make it happen, Lord." And He did. He did. Nanny Jeffries was visiting women in the Spartanburg County Jail as part of her work as pastor at Maranatha Free Church of Jesus Christ. She would go to pray for and encourage members or their children. And while I was there, there was such a feeling of despair and, and lack of hope. And I saw so many females and I started asking questions. So, so what are you gonna do when you leave here? And you know, they, they're going back to the same situation, playing in the same playground. So I, I thought about it, I prayed about it, and then I tried to get into the jail to just come talk to a group of women, not to preach, just to find out, well, since we have such a high rate of recidivism, what would it take to stop that, to decrease that? Well, uh, the officials at the detention center had me write a curriculum, which I did. Uh, actually, I think they thought it was going to deter me, but I'm determined. And uh, I wrote the curriculum, I submitted it to them in two weeks, and they accepted me. I met all of the, uh, the re regulations and requirements to be a volunteer, so I started going into the jail once a week. And I would go in and I would ask the question, what would it take for you not to return to jail? And what did you hear? I heard, I need a place to live. I need support, I need direction, I need an action plan for my life because I don't know where I'm going. I, I need to be reconciled with my family. Seeing a community need, Pastor Jeffries started Angels Charge, based in Spartanburg. The program offers support services in transition to women when they leave jail. The first two houses opened in 2014 and a third is being renovated. Each can house five or six women. The program is supported by donations and volunteers. At the time that you started Angels Charge, Spartanburg County ranked number one for female incarcerated. That's correct. That's correct. And there were no transitional homes in Spartanburg for women. There were several for men, but there was nothing for women. So yes, Spartanburg County was ranked number one in the state for reincarceration and seventh in the nation. Right now in the state, Spartanburg, we are number two, so we're we're going down. And I, I, I give all of that to Angels Charge because we are keeping ladies out of jail. They're not returning to jail. How do you keep them out of jail? You meet their needs. We do an assessment when they come into the program and uh, we meet them where they are. If they need some time to uh, disengage, for 30 days when they first come into the program, they don't talk to family, friends, children, none of that. They need to, for 30 days, focus on themselves. We do an assessment. We work up an action plan. And if you can't do that, if, if your concern is, well, I need to get to my children, well, you weren't with your children in incarceration. We want to keep you out and with your children for the long haul. So what, what is the thinking behind that, that they need to make a complete adjustment? They need to be committed. They need to be totally committed to restoring themselves and being able to love. One of the key factors that I found that ladies return is that they devalue themselves, they don't love themselves, so they will just do, they take charges for people. They have, the ladies didn't commit to cry but they'll take a charge for their husband or their, their boyfriend. No, you gotta love yourself and you have to be accountable for you first. Cause some of these people are in jail and they don't need to be in jail. They need to be rehabbed and they need to give them work skills. Because if you've been using drugs since you were 13, you've never had a job other than prostitution or dancing on the pole, you need to rehabilitate them, teach them how to do a job, show them how to do a budget, how to pay their bills, and live. These life skills help build confidence, and confidence is a trait Pastor Jeffries learned early on from her mother, who still gives her inspiration. My mom, she's 91, she'll be 92 in January, and she was a very strong lady. Uh, she raised six children alone, five boys and myself, after a divorce, and uh, 
She was great inspiration and strength. Did she give you advice that you're using today? Absolutely. What advice? Faith. She told me to always have faith, not to be a quitter. Even if you you fail the first time, continue to try. Um, my mom, after she and my dad were divorced, her family wanted to come in and take us. You know, they want to divide us up, but you can't take care of all these children because my mom didn't work. My dad was a sole provider. My mom got a job at one of the mills, and she said, if you set your mind to it, you can do it. She was a strong advocate for education. All of us have college degrees. Some have masters because she was a force for education. You come from a family of five brothers and you. How did that influence your later life? Being the only girl of five boys, um, six children, five boys, and myself, people would think that I was spoiled or I was a little princess. I was never a little princess. <laughs> you know, my brothers would say, stop acting like a girl. And I would say, but I am a girl. It made me strong. It made me not be a quitter. It made me, you know, go after things that I wanted to go after, not to be embarrassed or shy. So it gave me a lot of strength. You know, and my brothers talked to me. My oldest brother, who's an artist, uh, he's deceased. You know, he would talk to me about everything because my dad wasn't there. And he just told me, he said, just because you're a girl doesn't mean that you can't climb that tree. Climb it if you want. You want to ride that horse, ride the horse. So, so it really built that confidence. Yes, it did. Not a princess by any means. Not a princess, instead a life of service. Nanny Jeffries has worked with groups such as the Salvation Army, the Upstate Fatherhood Coalition, and the Spartanburg Historical Association. Was there a turning point in your life that led to your success later on? The turning point in my life, I would say, would be accepting a call to ministry. At first, I thought I was just going to teach uh, because my call was quite simple. I didn't have a Thunderbolt experience. It was simply go and learn of me and teach my people the truth. So I went to seminary, and when I was in seminary, I fell in love with church history. Just love it. To just see how we have evolved over the years. And from there, it was just off to the races to, to work in church and to do full-time ministry. Didn't want to pastor, but the door opened, and um, I accepted the invitation. Oh, it's going to be all right.